Hello, welcome to this community uh, workshop about the gun range in Berwick at 11 Meter Road. Um, ten. ten. Ten Meter Road, sorry. Um, can we please stand for the pledge? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Hello, everybody. We have a lot of public interest in this meeting tonight. Um, I am the chairman of the select, bo uh, select board for Berwick, Noah Cobb. Um, and up here, we have Charles Glemo. He's the chairman for the North Berwick Select Board. We have Dwayne, the town manager for North Berwick. We have James, the town manager for Berwick. Uh, Irish, who is the code enforcement officer Ber for Berwick. And Zachary Roberts. Zachary, who is the president? Correct. Yes, the president of the gun club. Um, and we have, go ahead and introduce yourselves as well. The peanut gallery. Huh? Yeah, the peanut gallery. <laughs> uh, I'm Tom Wright, one of the select board in Berwick. Um, Jonathan Hall, and I'm a selectman in North Berwick. Linda Coolis, selectman for Berwick. Mike Latterer, select board for Berwick. Wendy Collins, select board North Berwick. Mike Johnson, select board North Berwick. Terrific. Um, before we begin, we're going to have the town manager for Berwick give a small report about the current situation. I just want to thank everyone for being here, the representatives, the select, select boards, um, the gun, gun range club, and the concerned citizens. I think tonight's all about being good neighbors to each other, and that includes being respectful of the uses we have, but also respecting property rights and we're here to um, hear your concerns put everything out everything out on the table see what we can do see what, we, what challenges we have see what opportunities we have and just move forward the best we can together um, in a little bit you'll see we'll have a, a quick video and a narration of the layout of the gun range and uh, Irish has pulled together her um, research to date over the past couple of months. Um, so thank you, thank you again for, for being here. I don't know if Wayne will add anything. You did a good job. I covered it all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Uh, before we get to the video, I just want to make it perfectly clear. This is uh, we're a workshop. We're going to talk about issues. We're going to answer questions. But this is not going to be a place where we make any decisions. There's not going to be any votes taken. And there's certainly not going to be any debates going on. We're just going to be answering best questions to the best of our ability and hearing any concerns so that we can try to get answers to questions we don't necessarily have the answers to. Um, with that being said, we're obviously all going to be good neighbors and respectful of each other and have a good time and get to, get to some good solutions, I hope. Um, let's see the video. Um, I'm Tom Wright, as I said, is I'm uh, one of the select board members here. Um, my wife, Terry, also runs for community media. Um, we had a joint meeting last Thursday. Um, there's two of the North Brook select board members, two of the Brook members, and uh, members of the Gun Club Irish did a walkabout. Um, Terry took some video at that time. Um, <clears throat> the weather wasn't really good, so we came back on... Sunday of this last week to do some drone footage. Uh, most of the video, it's about a six minute video, I guess. It's gonna concentrate on, um, there's a, correct me if I'm wrong, a 200 yard range, a 50 yard range, a 25 yard range, and the cowboy range, I guess it's yep. called. Um, is the, drone, the video will go from range to range, <clears throat> When we get to the 25 yard range, is we don't get good drone footage or the cowboy range because Terry's drone broke at that point. But uh, <laughs> at the end, she's gonna put a uh, overview up from the drone so you can see the range and the surrounding area to see where things are and laid out. So, um. Thank you. Thank you. So this is 
is the from the first day, the ice age, I'll call it. Um, and <clears throat> this is from the original meeting. <laughs> uh, something's happening. So, so we'll go from here to the 200 yard range. And, and like I said, you see the difference. So this is the 200 yard range. We're standing up by where the buildings are that they shoot, and this is looking down range. <clears throat> There's a 100 yard range, 125 yard range, 150 yard range, and the 200 yard range is back here to the borough. Pointing approximately northeast is, uh, I use my 50-year-old Boy Scout compass, so, um, but you'll notice that, you know, the height of the berm, this board here is approximately at six feet. So you can see the height of the berms, you can see the mature trees around it, and where everything is. <clears throat> It should go up here, and but is when we do the 50-yard range, it shows up much better. Um, but you can see here, and if you look over in here, this is the backside of the cowboy range. Um, but you see, definitely see, you know, this range is definitely, you know, shooting out this way. This is Bonnie Big Mountain out here. <coughs> so. Uh, so this is just a, a quick overview, you know, looking down. This is out towards Wentworth Road and St. Pierre's. This is coming around towards Randall Road here. And you can just start making out fields here. Like I said, the next shot will be a better shot. But here's the 200-yard range, the cowboy range. <clears throat> this is coming back around to Route 9 and out towards Hackmatack and Guptles. And then down Wentworth Road, down here. This is the entrance into the gun range. And then she'll pan back around, and this is uh, up at the top of Wentworth Road at uh, St. Pierre's, Rainy St. Pierre's thing. So this is the 50 yard range. Again, she'll come in showing the height of the bank and you know, the trees surrounding it. And the, these targets are approximately you no know, chest height. Here, and you can see the back of the 200 yard range here. Again, the mature trees. Now she's up higher here, looking down. Do you want to let, let our latecomers through? Yeah, sorry. Yep, yep, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just yeah. so, so now she's going up higher. This is where you start getting a better overview. <clears throat> Again, this is the 50 yard range. This is the 200 yard. I have to say, the drone she uses is only a little teeny tiny thing. It looks like a little matchbox car almost. So, so now you can see here, this is Randall Road. This is the 200 yard range. So this is kind of pointed toward the north, east, eastly direction. Yeah. And you can see Randall Road in the back here and it will come around, she'll pan around. Again, the directions of the gun ranges here. Randall Road coming around. This is coming back around towards Route 9. The back of the Guptals coming down Route 9 to Wentworth Road. And then back around down Wentworth Road up to St. Pierre's Farm up there. Look way out, you can see me before. Again, this is the 200 yard range, the 50 yard range, and here you can see the 25 yard range here in this section. You notice the berms 
around, the mature trees around us. This is the 25 yard range. <clears throat> Again, she'll pan around. This is this is this is the ice age day. Like I said, it, it's like walking on a skate and it turned on a 45 degree angle that day. But, so this is again on Sunday, a clearer shot with the drone. She comes in. Again, these targets are approximately between three and four feet high. The berm in the back. <clears throat> Pan back around, showing the berm around it. And then the, the, the uh, targets here in comparison to the berms. So, and then this is the cowboy area. It, she didn't have a good chance to get down there with the drone. This is the day we walked down there, and you can see it was treacherous down there. <clears throat> so, there's, uh, you know, you can see different shooting stations, the berms surrounding it. Again, the berms surrounding it with the mature trees. <clears throat> Well, just one last thing, you know, and again, is this the overview? This is the 200 yard range. You know, this direction, this is Wrangell Road that comes in and then curves around. And we're, we're going to leave it there just for a reference. Thank you very much. Um, Irish is now going to present the, her findings from doing research about the various complaints that have been made. So let me start by uh, first of all thanking you all for your patience. Many of you have been in touch with me and uh, I, I have heard all of the concerns and I have done everything I can to look into things and unfortunately these investigations take a little bit of time. And I also appreciate you bearing with me while I read all of the information but I want you all to be aware of what's been done up to this point. So. Um, on Tuesday, November 9th of 2022, I received the initial complaint from North Borough resident Kathy Parody. She alleged that stray bullets had been found on various properties on Randall Road and described the noise from the gun range as out of control. She requested that the town stop the range from allowing open shooting, requiring them to build an enclosed range, asked about uh, towns that may have converted from open to closed ranges, requested a walkthrough of the range, asked if permits were required to remove berms. Uh, mentioned that she had spoken with a representative, Tiffany Roberts, and uh, questioned whether or not the, the range should have been allowed to be purchased given the gun club's growth. Um, she asked Could you quite. Pick up, please? Oh, certainly, sorry. Um, so she also stated she had not spoken with anybody from the range and asked if I had a relationship with them. So that's to show you that she and I had quite a bit of conversation. Um, I'm sure she's here. I can't even pick her out of the crowd. Oh. Hi. <laughs> so we had a lot of back and forth and I, I responded that I'd investigate her concerns and it would take time and I couldn't w promise a walkthrough, um, which I did ask, but obviously with it being an active shooting range was not something that the club was comfortable with having just members of the public that aren't necessarily range um, knowledgeable walking through which obviously I can respect that. We don't want anybody getting hurt. It's the whole purpose of this meeting. Um, so I reached out to the state and I told her I'd reach out to the state and that due to the laws on shooting ranges, it would be a little bit of time to hear back from everybody, but um, I did inform her and I want you all to be informed. The town does not have any control or any permitting process for the berms. Uh, we don't regulate earthworks to that extent. Um, we only regulate them when it comes to planning board projects, not for places that are currently owned by, by people. Um, and then on November 29th, uh, in the course of discussion with my town manager, James, he provided me with information from the town attorney that had been provided back in July because apparently, apparently this was an issue before I even came to town. Um, I joined the town of Berwick in November. So yeah. the 
information that he's provided from the attorney, I will read to you all so you're aware. Um, the short answer is that Maine law prohibits municipalities from enacting noise ordinances that would limit or prohibit shooting activities that take place in an existing gun range. The statute 30A MRS subsection 3011 relates to municipal regulation of sport shooting ranges and reads in relevant part as follows. That's subsection two. Limitation. A municipal noise control or other ordinance may not require or be applied so as to require a sport shooting range to limit or eliminate shooting activities that have occurred on a regular basis at the range prior to the enactment date of the ordinance, as long as the range conforms to generally accepted gun safety and shooting range operations practices, or is constructed in a manner not reasonably expected to allow for a projectile to cross the boundary of the range. So there's a lot of legal verbiage there, um, but there's a lot in that statement that basically says we can't do anything retroactively noise-wise. Um, the date on that is 2016, and this range has been in operation for a significantly longer time than that. So the statement from the town attorney further goes on to state there are also limitations on whether a property owner can even bring a nuisance action and generally only allows such an action if there has been a substantial change in the use of the range, which I'll address that aspect further in a few moments. And that statute, 17 MRS subsection 280, relates to private disputes and reads as follows. 2806, sports shooting ranges. Point one, acquisition of property near existing range, except as provided in this subsection, a person may not maintain a nuisance action, including for noise, against a shooting range located in the vicinity of that person's property if the shooting range was established as of the date the person acquired the property. If there is a substantial change in the use of the range after the person acquires the property, the person may maintain a nuisance action if the action is brought within three years from the beginning of the substantial change. So. Um, again, anything because this originally became, from my research, a shooting range in 1961 under the GE ownership. Um, ownership is not the issue, it's the use that the state bears in mind. So anybody who's purchased since 1961 will not have a successful lawsuit as per the state laws for a nuisance noise complaint. The subsection 2. Establishment of shooting range near an existing property. A person who owns property in the vicinity of a shooting range that was established after the person acquired the property may maintain a nuisance action, including for noise against that shooting range, only if the action is brought within five years after the establishment of the range or three years after substantial change in use of the range. Again, I haven't addressed substantial use. We'll cover that. But in essence, unless somebody were to have filed a complaint by 1966, this was a non-issue. Dormant shooting range, if there has been no shooting activity at a range for a period of three years, resumption of shooting is considered establishment of a new shooting range for purposes of this section. They've never stopped shooting there, it's been a continuous range. And the section does not limit nuisance actions against shooting ranges established on or after September 1st, 2016. That's where that date comes from. <clears throat> now, on November 30th, I spoke with Doug Kirk of the Maine ATF, the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms. And he's at the Portland Satellite Office in the Industry Operations section. He informed me the state of Maine has no regulatory authority I could be directed to for the inquiries that I was making. He suggested I reach out to the Fire Marshal's Office, which was no results. They don't handle it. A Fish and Game Club or the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Now, I contacted the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife because I wanted an impartial uh, Ear to bounce these these concerns off of, not stating that the gun club itself is uh, not impartial, but mm -hmm. seemed like the better idea. So uh, on that same day, I did receive copies of the police reports from Burrock Police Department. There were nine reports submitted to me. Of those, uh, five were from one individual. Four of those were noise complaints that the shooting started prior to the 8 a.m. time the gun club had voluntarily agreed to impose on the members and having read through the meeting notes of the club going back to September of 2016, the date at which we could require them to update their range if they had made major changes, it appeared they had some issues with getting word out to all members and were uh, looking into investing in better signage according to the meeting minutes from the August 4th, 2022 meeting. 
uh, the fifth complaint from this person was documented as no specific complaints with notes that stated the range has been run questionably and alleging several bullet holes in houses and cars. But um, that was, again, documented as no specific complaint. Of the remaining four reports related to gunfire, uh, two of the complaints came from one individual and a third complaint from a separate individual were noise complaints. The fourth call was from a gentleman who stated he thought someone from one of the houses behind him has been shooting a gun off randomly and stated it was an ongoing issue. None of the complaints from the Burrock residents alleged any stray bullets. Um, there were, as I said, primarily noise complaints. On December 5th, I spoke with Jared Gay from Senator Rafferty's office. Mr. Gay was reaching out to follow up on a complaint that was made to Senator Rafferty about the shooting range. I shared all the information I had at the time. Mr. Gay asked if there was anything that they could do to help our constituents, and uh, I told him unless there was something that would change that law, there's nothing that, that I can see that his office could do for us. And he stated at that time that there was neither time to draft and present legislation that could assist us, nor was there likely to be any legislation presented that would overturn Statute 30A that would ever be approved. Uh, he actually voiced that to do so would probably be met with a whole lot of uh, Second Amendment rights complaints. So December 3rd, I received a, in hand a letter from Stephen Wendy Guptill. Ms. Guptill explained her concerns very clearly and played cell phone video from inside her, her home showing the noise level and why she was concerned. Both in person and in the letter, the Guptills made it clear that the president and treasurer of the gun club had come to the house and discussed possible changes to provide some measure of noise relief. That meeting led to the change of hours from sunrise to sunset over to 8 a.m. to sunset. And in the letter, the Guptills mentioned their son coming across a freshly shot deer. I personally am not a hunter, so I had to do a little research on that one. But unfortunately, deer hunting season in Maine begins with archery on September 9th and continues through December 9th with October 21st being youth hunting day. So unless there was evidence directly linking the deer to the range, the natural assumption has to be that there was a hunter in the woods probably tracking that kill at that time. Um, on December 6th, I spoke with Craig Gary, MW, IFW, from Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Mr. Gary informed me there is no state level regulatory body for gun ranges. That was confirmed. And everything is handled at the local level, but he was willing to share information with me. Uh, he informed me that major change or substantial change only really is considered to apply by the courts if they add an additional type of range or an additional shooting lane. Um, he says, been definitively ruled in the courts, neither increase in membership nor increase or change in hours are considered major changes. He also further expressed that increase in um, you know, sh number of shots per day. None of this would ever, um, has all been voted down by the courts as not evident of any sort of major change or significant change. So at that point, our options, um, as instructed by Mr. Gary, were for the PD to shut them down for safety reasons, if we had definitive proof that projectiles were leaving the property, and keep them down until they made reasonable adjustments, or for me to contact them and see if they were willing to have Mr. Gary come do a safety inspection. If so, he does inspections based on the NRA safe shooting guidelines, and he can give advice, but he can't require changes. Additionally, in regards to the noise complaints, uh, Mr. Gary told me he was currently involved in a gun club rebuild and the construction is costing roughly $2.6 million for an enclosed uh, shooting facility and about a third of that is soundproof fencing. And from what I've seen in the meeting notes, it appears to me that this is, this is far beyond anything that the Sanford Springvale Gun Club can afford um, and it is definitively beyond my legal rights to require. So on December 7th, I spoke with Chief Peasley of the North Berwick PD, and we discussed all the complaints that he had in front of him related to the gun range and stray bullets going back approximately 15 years. He mentioned a bullet had hit a horse barn as well as a garage being hit and a chunk of trim being taken out of that garage by a bullet. He stated one complaint alleged a bullet breaking a car window, and when I asked him to clarify some more about these incidents, he confirmed there was no direct evidence these shots were fired from the gun range rather than from any of the wooded areas around the properties. And further, he clarified that no bullet was found in regard to the car window being broken. And as only one window was broken in the car, the only reason the report comes up when they query their reports is because the caller alleged it was broken out by a bullet. 
Otherwise, all of the complaints that they've received in North Berwick are noise complaints as well. Um, I have spoke with Chief Town about it as well when he delivered in hand to me the reports for Berwick. Um, and neither Chief Peasley nor Chief Town felt safety complaints as presented, combined with the lack of evidence tying the complaints to the gun range, rose to a level that they would be comfortable closing the range or requiring changes to be made. In fact, they both stated they felt this range was likely one of the safest in the area, although they both acknowledged noise complaints were another matter and subject to each individual's personal noise comfort levels. On January 25th, I received a call from a different ATF agent regarding a different matter, but being who I am, I took the opportunity to run the situation by him as well. He stated Mr. Gary was correct, and there's really nothing the town of Berwick can do as a municipality unless we choose to shut the range down, citing safety concerns. He did advise me that since all of the evidence of bullets hitting buildings is circumstantial, circumstantial and there has been nothing definitively tied to shots coming from the range, that not only could the Sanford Springvale Fishing Game Club choose to sue the town to reopen without any changes, um, they could sue us for even taking the action and they would likely win based on the historical lawsuits in regards to firearms. And then on February 9th, as Tom said, the club was kind enough to allow us to join them on a walk through the, the range. And all evidence from the site walk appears to show that the berms are sufficiently high to prevent missed shots from creating a hazard to any adjacent properties. As a follow-up to that visit, Terry went and did that video. Um, I reviewed that video prior to this meeting, and based on the amount of trees around the range, particularly between the range and Randall Road, I don't see that there can be justified stating there's a danger to the residents that can be attributed to the range. Now, that's not to say that these bullets may not be, but from what I've seen and what I know about firearm safety, um, it would have to be a deliberate attempt to completely miss the berms. Um, and based on the, as you can see, very wooded nature in between the range and Randall Road, um, a lot combined with the complaint from a person about their neighbor shooting behind their house uh, without anything definitively tying any of these shots to the range, i.e. the police responding out there and finding a shooter in the range with a, a weapon that matches these misfired rounds. We have to take the common sense approach that it's quite possible and in fact very likely that the shots that were fired or misfired came from somebody in the woods hunting, somebody shooting in their backyards, just, you know, firing their weapons. So that's all the all of the uh, work that I've been able to do and all of the regulatory agencies I've been able to speak to thus far. Thank you very much, Irish. <coughs> very comprehensive report. I try. <coughs> At this time, we are going to have uh, uh, <clears throat> people come to the podium, and uh, they are welcome to ask questions, make comments, whatever you like. Uh, we're not going to answer them piecemeal as they come. We are going to write them down, and after everybody who wants a chance to speak has had a chance to speak, then we will um, address the questions and comments as best we can. Um, going forward. Uh, you will have to come up to the microphone. You need to state your name and you need to state your address for the record. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, a, please, at your leisure, anybody who wants to step forward may. Demi Erickson, 143 Randall Road. We have the horse facility there, and we had called. The police came out, um, but we're still picking up bullets. I, I can't believe that somebody across the road would be shooting in that direction towards us. It's all housing. I, so I don't, and I know you don't know either. What? It, it's it's a dilemma. I mean, I gave a bunch of bullets to the policeman. Thank you. I'm Priscilla Drochwan. I live at 45 Wentworth Road. I did not hear any um, people, anything in your report about all the noise. 
I feel like I'm living in the middle of a war zone. I don't know about the rest of the neighbors, but we can't even enjoy our yard. I know I've talked to Zach, and he has explained that they're going to put up some um, evergreens, which may or may not dull the sound, but my backyard is maybe 300 at the most feet from the first shooting range as you go in the, into the pit, and it's, and it's annoying, very annoying. I'd never felt that I could say much about it because we bought the property in the early 70s knowing it was an active shooting range, but it was a very quiet active shooting range. Now it's anything but quiet. It's, I don't know what they're using, probably the, I know a lot of um, automatic stuff is going on out there because it's rapid fire and I might as well be living in a war zone. Thank you. Lenny Dago, I live on uh, 165 Randall Road. And are you the president of the gun club? And did you go over to the Wendell, uh, the uh, couples, Wendy couples? Were you the one with on the porch that day? Yes. And um, so we, when you were over to listen, because she had to complain about the noise, and you were with somebody else, the treasurer or something like that. And I, I read her a little note there, and you, you guys said that you just couldn't believe what you were hearing, or, or was it something to that effect. So now this noise is absolutely nothing to anybody. It's just it's we're just going to blow it off, and the town just going to say every, this, the berm's legal. This is legal. This is legal. That's bullshit. This freaking noise is just completely insane. Like they, everybody's saying here, if you're, in a, you're in a war zone. It's just nonstop, all freaking day long. It's bang, 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 all day long. And I'd like to have you hear that in your freaking yard. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you all for having us here. Thank you, James, for organizing this for us. Thank you, Zach, for being here representing the gun range. Um, I just want to say that your report was very, very good on a law, on, on the level of a law. And I did hear it's not about the noise. It's about the official. So maybe that's what we need to work on instead is the law instead of coming to the town. I don't know. But we do need help from the town. This is something very serious. We can't prove where those bullets come. We're not, and I just want to clearly Maybe also say, right, exactly. But I, I just want to clearly say, this is not us against you, the gun range. It's not. We're not trying to sport, stop your sportsmanship. We're not. We're trying to live our lives on, a, on our private properties in, with some kind of saying, you know, just being able to live our property. I can't even visit. I can't even have a porch visit in the summertime. And I just want to play something for you, and I hope you'll understand my purpose for doing this. We all know that it's a sport. We want you to have your sport, but we want to have our private, our time on our property as well. And I hope you will understand that, and I hope the town will understand that. Because, yes, we can talk about a law all day long, but as we mentioned, it's about us coming back together to be good neighbors, and that's what we're asking for. So I just want to say that um, my husband and I had COVID in, in November. We couldn't even rest. That's all we heard. This was November, and our windows were closed. And we couldn't even um, rest because it was so loud in our house, <laughs> seriously. Um, just watch, trying to relax, watch TV, sleep, whatever it was. I can't seem to get this up. But um, I just want to say that I hope the town will be able to do something for us and that maybe the gun range will work neighborly with us because we can't take it anymore. And, if it, and yes, we could fight all day long about this. We've come to be good neighbors, and we're asking for help from the town. We're asking for help from the gun range and, and to, to understand where we're coming from. I'm trying to get up a video that I, I took, and I can't seem to pull it up. I don't know why <laughs> it's not coming up, but maybe I'll come back up after in okay, case somebody has something to say. But I hope you will understand. I do agree with it. It's, all, it's okay. You guys can all go home tonight, and you're not going to listen to this. You, you're representing the town. You're representing the range. We're representing the state. But you don't have to listen to it, and it will get to you. And, if, and I will welcome any of you. Please, come sit on our porch. Not for a day, not for five minutes, but for a whole week, for a couple of hours every day, because this goes on all day, all day. It's boom, 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 and that's all we hear, seven days a week. So I hope that you guys will really 
find a way to help us. I don't believe you stated your name and address. Oh, for I'm the record, so sorry. Please. Wendy Guptill, 556 School Street. Thank you. I'll say so. I'm um, Connor Guptill, 98 Randall Road. I also run Hackmatack Farm, which I, I believe is adjacent to the shooting range. Um, I just wanted to say that it agreed. It is unbelievably loud. I, I, and I, I grew up on 98 Round Road, and when I was a kid, it was um, quiet. Now it does feel like there's semi-automatic and automatic weapons. Also very loud. I mean, it's just overwhelmingly loud. Um, I, we, have, we have trails behind Hackmatack Farm where kids are walking and families are walking during the week. I brought my son here because my son's out there all the time. There's young kids that are out there in the woods, the woods is private property. No one's hunting on that property. It's my dad's property. He's here as well. So um, it's dangerous. It's got to be dangerous. I mean, the amount of shooting that goes out, goes on there is, is really unbelievable. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. My name is Kathy Parody. Um, this, the history of bad things happening over there started in 2004, pretty much when the property was transferred from GEEA to the Sampton Springvale Range. I have letters that I passed out to both selectmen um, from Arthur Lamontang, who was the representative of the range at that time, and it was very um, telling. He stated right there kind of get used to the noise because we are growing. I mean, read, read it, okay? Um, my husband, Billy, who's not with me now, he passed away in 2008, was a hunter safety instructor. This is his patch. I own a gun. My husband came from a long family of, you know, generation of hunters. We're not anti-gun by any stretch of the imagination. Um, these are pictures, this is Officer Peasley inspecting a bullet hole in my siding. Um, we sent a letter, certified letter to the shooting range. I don't think they ever wrote back to me personally even though we did send them a letter personally back after this happened. This is a picture of Lenny's house. If anybody wants to see this, it shows the chunk of wood that came out of his house, the trajectory, if you look down, it shows the bullet, you can see where it's a down hole, it's a dropped bullet, it's an errant bullet. Somebody was shooting up. I don't know what they were shooting at, but I have documented police reports to show that the bullets on Randall Road, in people's houses, barns, are in the direct trajectory of the range. There's nobody else on Randall Road that has a bullet in their house that I know of. And how many people do you know that have bullets in their houses? It's not a common occurrence. In all probability, the bullets are coming from the shooting range. And I have a lot more to say, but I'll let somebody else say something. Sorry, could you say your uh, address oh, for the record, me. please? 164 Randall Road, and I think my house is probably that one. Well, this is Randall Road, right? This, this, yeah. this is Randall Road up here. Right. So, my house is less than a half mile from the range. As we know, some of these high caliber rifles, the bullets that are discharged from those rifles can travel more than a mile. It makes perfect and logical sense that Lenny's, this report right here, came from that range. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Skip Powell, I'm 175 Randall Road. I own weapons myself. About the same time that that happened with Kathy's, Kathy's house, my wife has horses. She was out in the paddock and ching, bullet goes by her head. Um, then my first wife, 
maybe I would have wanted it to be six inches to the left. <laughs> uh, no, not it's not a funny thing. If somebody got, gets hurt, it, it's, it's just uh, and that's more the, what I'm worried about than anything. Uh, and there is there insurance regulations to ranges. Can anybody answer that? The state have any regulation? That's nothing that I've that was discussed because insurance was not because if something like that insurance did was not on the scope of what I was looking for. What I was looking for was relief. But may I ask, was that ever reported to the police? Because that was not. Yes, I have a police report for Roberta's. I have it in my. Yeah. In fact, I think they have it. If, um, if you're going to speak, you need to come to the microphone. Because that. Excuse, excuse me. My name is Kathy Parity. I'm Skip's neighbor, and. Um, both Dwayne and James have a copy of the police report, Roberta's police report. And I will add, Tom Hoyt's report, who used to live where Demi and Laurie live. Well, so there's Chief a history. Lee, Chief Peasley did not report that to me. Okay. So that was not provided to me. So thank he you. He has copies. <coughs> Does anybody else wish to speak? Paul, do you want to say something? Uh, no, not just. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Cheryl Wentworth, 246 River Road. I have lived there since 1975 when GE owned the range. The occasional turkey shoe, somebody sighting a gun. And it has gradually grown, but I'd say in the last few years, it has gotten way worse. It's 365 days a year, sun up to sundown. I have recordings of the sun setting with my phone, shooting after sunset. So obviously there's nobody in charge. I feel like it's a free-for-all over there. Is there security there? Another question, does the shooting range have insurance? Should a bullet leave that range? Who? Who will cover that person's injury or or will the town be responsible for this? Who will ultimately be responsible for this? I also think that it's very close to that brook. Like Connor Guptel said, we like to walk, walk along the brook. It's a nice walk. Are we safe? It's a huge safety thing. I don't bring my grandchildren out there anymore because the shooting has gotten unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how many rounds can go off in like 50 seconds or 20 seconds, but it's a lot. I don't even know how people can afford to go there. It must be a lot of people shooting all at once. And you know, what is the safety protocol over there? Thank you. I think I probably have some more questions. Well, I think else don't have a lot. <laughs> Uh, I'm Michael Guptill. Uh, I live on 538 School Street. My land abuts the uh, the, the shooting range. Um, I'm probably one of the few people here that has lived on the same property that abuts the shooting range just before the shooting range. Uh, it has substantially changed over the past five years. Uh, yeah. Cheryl was saying five years substantially changed. I mean, I lived with it all my life. We used to go there and, and, and watch people shoot clay pigeons. Uh, clay pigeons don't have a chance over there now. Um, it, it's substantially worse. And, I, you know, it's, is there a day that it changed? I don't, I don't know that. But it certainly has changed um, in, in the past five years. So, so it, obviously, you worry about the stray bullets, too. Right? That's The more shooting there is, Probably more stray bullets, just proportionally. Oh. Got. Thank you. Yeah, Skip Powell again, 175 Randall Road. I, I'd like to know: Do you guys, uh, when somebody comes to sign up, do you guys do any background check? Or can some Yahoo that just got out of prison join your club? 
I mean, <laughs> you, you've gone from probably what a hundred members twenty years ago to eight hundred now. Is it, is that what it is? Six hundred? Do you know? Do you have a number? We'll, 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 we wrote down your your concern. We'll we'll, we'll discuss it at at, at the, everybody else has brought forward their questions. My name is Steve Guptill, I'm 556 School Street. Like my brother, um, we've been there all our lives so far on that piece of land. And <clears throat> what's happened is the gun club has outgrown the area, and the area has outgrown the glove club. And it's got to be fixed and resolved the sooner the better. It's going to have to happen. Safety, for sure, is the most important issue here. But the noise is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, if you want to have a, uh, if you want to have a road trip, if you say, in the summertime over our place, and go on some of the trails that Connor has put out in the in the woods uh, during the shooting, <laughs> you know, you're going to pass at your own risk. It's crazy. It's crazy. It sounds like a war. I tried to lay down on on a on a uh, swing on my porch this summer. Couldn't do it. Just want to take a nap Sunday afternoon. Wasn't going to happen. This is only going to get worse. They got over 800 members. There's way too many. It's too crowded. There's a lot of people trying to have a life there. We own land. We have private property. Also, it can't happen. Something is going to have to happen there soon. Because this will only get worse. It will only get worse. Because it's too loud. They, like I said, they can, more members can join, I guess. I don't know. Or is there a limit at 800? It doesn't make any difference. It's too noisy. It's like a war going on, and there's, and there's, never, there's never a break. There's never a break. And sometimes it's before dusk, I mean before dawn, and sometimes it's after dusk. And even if it was sun up to sun down, it's, it's un livable in our area now so we got to figure it out thank you Wendy Gato again um, <laughs> <this time? laughs> I, I hope so so I just want to give you a sample of this is just our front porch this is not even inside our home I, I have some from inside our home but this is our front porch and I just want you to hear this and I also want to read let me do this first before I lose it, because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so let's hope that it plays. That's just one. I have I have so many, and I have from inside our home, different parts of our home, hearing it. But I also want to talk about the safety. If you talk about safety of a gun, that's one thing. But let's talk about the safety and health of the people who are listening to it every day. That has to come under some kind of guidelines with the safety issue. Because to me, our health is, I mean, it, you just can't even believe what we're listening to. And again, it's not against the gun range. It's about us being able to enjoy our properties and our lives. And it's so true. When Zach and I had this conversation, he asked me, what do you think's changed? It has changed tremendously. It is all the time. So let's talk about safety of our health, too. Can I say something, Wendy? Yeah. yeah. This is all George Vaughn again. Um, that was very mild, what she played for you. That was hardly noise. Right. What we hear from our side of the road. And I hear it, too. Is... Yeah, I know where you live. War zone. <laughs> no, it's it just like a war zone. I mean, it's like I said, we bought the property in the early '70s. We never started building on it until our kids were through public school, and we actually moved in in '92, February '92. We started building in '89, and it was a quieter scenario. There were no. We were the newest house on that end of Wentworth Road. Since then, there are several new houses, a development, and 
more houses on our side of the road that were not there 10 years ago. But they have little kids, a lot of them. Yeah, it's like a neighborhood. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a neighborhood. It's not like a rural area anymore. No, it, it's, you know, the, we, we abut the right of way to the range. The back side of our property goes down along the side of your range. And I don't know exactly how far you go across towards St. Pierre's property. But, you know, like Wendy says, it's hard to enjoy your own yard. We like to sit out. I like to do yard work. It's very distracting. They have been very considerate about saying that if we are having an event in our yard, let them know and they will shut the range down for the day or try to shut it down, which is very considerate of them. But that's only one day occasionally. I mean, it's 24, well, not 24 seven, cause, but I heard the gunshots the other night, well after nine o'clock at night. That's not supposed to happen. And last, summer before last, like 6, 6.15 in the morning, somebody was out there shooting. That now has changed because of the eight o'clock time. But that's so inconsiderate of people, even though they've got the rules I know that they don't all follow the rules, and I know that they changed the, the entrance, the gate, because we were looking at it the other day, and, but you can walk around it, such as I did to look at, see what their keypad was like. So people can get in there that are not supposed to be there. Again, it's a war zone. <coughs> Does anybody else wish to speak? My name is Lori Fudge. I'm at 143 Randall Road. Uh, we bought 10 years ago in 2012, and I did not know there was a gun range so close to us until the first weekend after we closed on our house. Um, because at that time, it was, it was significantly less. So just as a unit of measure, We've only been here 10 years, but it has increased uh, significantly in the last, I would say, four to five years. Um, but my questions are, uh, that I know you can't answer now, but um, as far as who monitors and or keeps track of people that are coming and going. So here's my scenario. If I, we have livestock, we have horses. If I go out in the paddock, which is close to the barn, which is where we found some stray bullets, um, and I find a dead horse, God forbid, um, and we can pull a bullet out of that horse. Do you have a list of people that have been there in that last 24 hours? I want to know what the, how people are held accountable for their time there so that if there is an incident, that there is a way to trace it and or rule out or find out, um, if there's a match to that bullet that we can pull out of an animal or God forbid a person. Um, I have staff that comes in, I have children. Um, and you know, I love Randall road. It's other than the noise, my kids walk their dogs. Um, it's just, this is a huge safety concern. And I want to know that if something happens, what, what is the recourse and where do we get that information? How is the gun range monitored uh, for people that come and go from there and for their weapons? Thank you. Thank you. Kathy Parody, 164 Randall Road, back again. <laughs> um, there's been two concerned citizens committees formed because of this range. The first one started in 2004 with just the Berwick residents. Um, and then after that, my husband and I formed one. So actually, this is the third one <laughs> because of what's happened with Lenny's property and Laurie's property. It started in 2004 with, and I have a letter from to the Berwick Planning Board from Eddie and Monique St. Pierre dated October 4th, 2004. 
Please find enclosed a letter that Wentworth Road residents received from the Sanford Springvale Fish and Game Association a few weeks ago. They state in the letter that all types of exploding devices will be banned. Our concern as neighbors to their facility is that they follow through with what they say they will do. What happened was they had live rounds. They were firing live rounds and they promised not to do that anymore. So they did stop the live rounds. Um, but, you know, I have a copy of, I have copies of the petition. Fast forward to October, September 20th, 2004. It's Arthur Lamontang, who was the president of the Executive Range Committee, SSF&G. Um, and then he said, enclosed is a copy of my segment of the monthly newsletter sent to all members. As promised, it includes notice banning all types of exploding devices at this facility. As also promised, a date has been scheduled con to conduct tests of various calibers. And that's a whole nother story that I won't get into right now. If you read the range notes and you go to page two of the range notes, which is from their October 2004 range notes, it's very telling. As for the increased noise level, it is the general consensus, consensus that perhaps the relocation of the rifle firing range line in an effort to direct all projectiles downward, thus eliminating the possibility of them exiting the premises, may have eliminated some of the buffering effect. So that's when they changed their firing line to stop facing Randall Road, which coincides with bullets in people's houses. It is our intent to conduct tests October 9th, da 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 da. However, we, we do wish, however, to remind anyone living in the immediate area that they have chosen to live next to an active shooting facility, as I am certain that it, it has been there longer than most of the residents, and regardless of the activity level, good or bad, it is still a shooting range, and in so being, will always involve a fair amount of noise. Having dealt with the same situation in the Sanford area due to the increase of new homes that were added to the surrounding area already occupied by an active shooting range facility, I feel obligated to remind everyone of the legislation that was passed several years ago, LD96, which protects and grandfathers any shooting facility already in effect to the passing of the bill. Um, but in another letter, he, he talks about we're going to be around for a long time and basically just, just learn to live with it. We plan on growing. And But the berm was moved, or gravel was moved. And I have other letters that talk about gravel being moved. And my husband, before he died, went over and measured all the coordinates and he compared the, the shooting ranges berm to where we are at level-wise. We are at 157 feet. The ranges berm was at 154 feet. So, <clears throat> and our house to the berm is 0 0.40 miles. So, that's not good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Joseph Rafferty, I'm actually not a local resident, but I am, uh, I serve in the Senate representing folks in this area, so I've heard from a number of them. I want to thank you folks for putting yourself out there. This is um, amazing to sit and watch and listen, as it truly is uh, the way that Maine should work and government should work. So thank you for um, for your for the opportunity to to be here. But most importantly, it's difficult for a guy like Zach to kind of feel like he's on the he's on the firing line himself. So, but in any case, I know you're here for a work session, so I was going to pose a couple of questions for you to consider in that. So um, it seems to me that uh, much of what I've heard centers around sound. So I'm hoping that there's some discussion and, and that um, the range can can share perhaps 
in terms of what studies have been done in terms of other ranges, how do they work? I mean, we aren't the only range in Maine, nor is this the only range that's close to a municipal uh, area, so to speak. So is there any study out there in terms of sound? Um, there is a long history that this exists, but it seems as though there's been a huge increase in terms of membership or numbers. Um, and I'm not sure what drives that. Question for me would be, is the range supervised at all times? Uh, Mr. Gary's name was mentioned earlier uh, as a possibility for re a review of the safety factors at the range. Can that actually uh, be requested or can that actually take place or be done? Not sure when the last safety um, report was shared. And um, I know the range has done a lot of things and you know I think I appears they're very open-minded, but uh, is there a consideration for hours of operation? And I would uh, uh, ask just for the neighbors, I, I would think that if, if that is a go, would you also consider an occasional rotating day off so that, as a possibility? I know it appears as everyone's looking for some compromise, and I just ask that uh, you sh consider those thoughts in your conversations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, and thank you all for putting this on. I'm uh, Representative Tiffany Roberts, Southburg resident, but represent um, all the Randall Road folks here. Um, again, I hear a lot of just kind of frustration, um, and and Irish is right. You know, there's the, the state has <laughs> has bound to certain things. I mean, there's hypothetical. You know, one legislature cannot bind another. Things can be undone, but we don't want to do that. You know, I'm wondering if just things need to be looked at again. You know, with folks from the gun range and the state and IFNW, what really struck me was there was someone made a comment that the gun range has outgrown itself and so has the community. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering where else this has happened. So if in theory we were to put together a working group at the state level, not to change anything right now, but just to start some conversations to see where there might be things, I would be interested in hearing from you all, not tonight, not putting you on the spot, who would like to be involved and things that you might want to address in that. And. I'm sure you can get my email if you just Google me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I, I know that I probably shouldn't say this, but I do know that this, that there is that you have another gun range ten minutes from us. I don't have another home to go to. They have a gun range. That's that's their privilege. I, that's great. But they travel 10 minutes <laughs> into Berwick and, and the noise and the frustration. And, and I'm really concerned about the safety. I know that we can't prove anything, but there is a safety issue here. And the health issue of all of us listening to this constantly. Mm -hmm. But I don't have another home to go to. They have a range 10 minutes away. I understand I could have a house 10 minutes away. But I hope being a good neighbor, that's another part of this, that it's not like they don't have another place to go and shoot. but. I understand this is their property, but I just want to say that. Anyone else? Um, Kathy again. Um, James, I gave you a list of questions. Were you going to read those questions? I was under the understanding. Are these Paul Hatford's questions? Is it another? Paul Hafford had a bunch of questions. Yeah, so I emailed questions. Just... Yeah, we're yeah. going to address them all, okay. all the questions at once that were submitted via email right. as well as those asked here today. So I don't want to be redundant and ask a very important question about having an independent inspection of the range by maybe perhaps someone at the federal level. But he said he's, a, he's got those questions, so thank you. Here, here's K. 
cabbies emails a question. Yes, yeah, so, I so, yeah. saw. If there's no further questions, then we will hear from the gun range and get their response on the, the varying topics that were just brought up. Um, before yes. they do that, um, sorry, Zach. So, first of all, thank you, Kathy, for providing the North Berwick copies of these reports because um, the my notes from uh, speaking with Chief Peasley, those were not things that were mentioned in his, I don't know why he failed to mention those, but I actually have my my chicken scratch here, and literally he talked about the horse barn, uh, the broken window, but stated that there was no bullet, and they didn't have proof that the broken window or the horse barn or the one from the garage was from the gun range. This other thing about the driveway and the complaints about uh, bullets whizzing by people were not disclosed to me, so I do apologize for that. Okay. Um, but I appreciate the additional information. Thank you. Um, another item that I wanted to address, uh, the lovely lady over there, I didn't, didn't, don't remember names, too many of you at once. It's Priscilla. Priscilla. I've got a tax record that doesn't have the door over the road but I'll go by Priscilla. Okay, well, Priscilla, um, you asked about the noise, and you said you didn't hear anything about the noise. I want to assure you guys that when I looked into this, there was two parts of me looking into this, okay? There was the, there is the, um, this is going to sound terrible, but the redneck part of me that used to fire guns behind my house because I had a stream and a, and a berm, and, you know, that person who lived in Limerick and did that kind of thing, and I'm used to gunshots being heard around my house and hunters all year round, and... And that kind of thing, because there's a hunting season pretty much every day of the year for something. Um, so there was that, that part of me that was a person and knew how frustrating it is to finally get that chance to sleep in that one day a week, and then you're woken up because somebody's shooting something two doors down. So that part of me was looking into this, and it's not that I'm not sympathetic as to the noise. The reality is, is as I sit before you in this chair... I'm a representative of the municipality. I'm appointed by the town of Berwick to be the code enforcement officer, but I report to the state. And when I'm doing my job, I have to look into it as what the law allows me to require, what the law prevents me from requiring. Everything in relation to any sort of noise ordinances that we have on the books does not apply to anything that's you know, pre-2016, and the age of this, because it's, we do have another another property where I've gotten an inquiry about them wanting to put a gun range. Um, and I'll be honest, I told them exactly what we're dealing with here tonight um, and told them that if they're thinking about doing this, they really need to, to take this into consideration because unlike this range, that one will have to conform to a whole lot of things. But I have to look at it realistically that I am not allowed to shut them down based on noise. That every, you know, both both ATF agents that I spoke with, uh, Craig Gary from the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, everybody that I've spoke with, because of the, between the age of the um, range itself and the lack of definitive, this came from the range. Um, and with New England being full of hunters, there's not much that I can do and not much, uh, you know, I even asked in regards to if you guys were to do a, a complaint as a butters and, and that's where all that law information came from. That, you know, anything after 1966 at the outside uh, would be dismissed. So it's not that you're, that's a horrible analogy, but not that your complaints have fallen on deaf ears. Um, and I'm, I'm well aware of what you guys are facing. It's just that as I sit before you with any solutions, the most we can do is discuss with the gun club. Um, and they do have an update as far as a walkthrough with Mr. Gary. Um, unfortunately, I've also looked into it. There is no um, any sort of funding grants available for, and maybe this is something for the, the uh, representatives. representatives in the room. There's no funding for clubs such as these to have any sort of soundproofing uh, provided, and since most of these run borderline nonprofit levels of funding, you know, we can ask, but we can't make under the law, and it doesn't seem realistically like that's something they can do, but I'll allow them to speak to that, but I wanted to add that information for you. 
Thank you, Eric. Uh, before we get to any specific questions, is there any statement you want to make on behalf of the gun club before we get to the actual individual uh, points of contention? <laughs> You're required to. Just, just to ask a question there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Loaded questions. More now. We, we, we do hear your concerns. We really do. And we're not cold hearted. We are trying to act on them. And we do take them all very seriously. Um, she's going to yell at me about the microphone. <laughs> 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 Right Don't worry, we've all learned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all learned. Uh, She's not bashful. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we do take the concerns very seriously, uh, especially the safety part of it. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, we take the safety side of it extremely seriously. And I will tell you, the woods behind that property is safe. I walk out there all the time on my own. I have no concerns being back there. Okay. That I, I cannot stress that enough. I, I've spent probably I spent twelve hours out there this past weekend um, looking at sound, and that's the other side of it. Is sound is a very strange thing. It can what's necessarily heard on our property is not what is being heard in one specific place outside of that. Right. Everybody has heard of the rooms that you stand in one spot and you can hear somebody on the other side of the room, but you go to the other side and you can't hear it. That That is very real. Um, and the, the Guptals had mentioned we did go over and sit with them. And uh, to be honest, they are getting a little bit of an echo, which I was not expecting to hear. Um, and it, I have been hunting for where it's coming from uh, very heavily. And we're trying to be good neighbors um, and acknowledge these concerns. Okay. Um, obviously, noise is the main complaint, and that's, you know, um, from what Irish has said, that there's no. There's no legal basis in which we can create a limit or, you know, you know, stop operations or create a, a, a decibel meter or anything like that. Um, after this, after going through various responses, we're going to have a discussion about what possibilities might exist between the, the gun range and the town to, you know, find solutions to these problems. Um, so I won't go too heavily into that. Again, there's no particular legal basis, and you seem very open to, you know, at least discussing opportunities where we can we can limit those. Um, trail safety is something that you you already noted that you feel is incredibly safe. Um, do you would you be um, in favor of allowing the um, was it ATF or uh, inland fisheries and wildlife inland fisheries Correct, and wildlife. Gary. Uh, would you be in favor of allowing him to come perform a safety inspection just to make sure that it's um, something that's independently verifiably yep. good? Uh, yes, we have actually requested he come and visit. He wanted to wait until after this meeting um, so we can provide some of the concerns to him as specifics. Uh, I'm not sure when he's going to come down, but that that is something we are working with him on. Terrific. Um, and on top of that, the criteria that he has for evaluating the range is set forth from the NRA. It's the same one that we use um, already and have for my tenure there at the very least. Now you're the, you're the president of the um, uh, is it the gun club or just the or just this range? Uh, the entire organization. Okay. So you do also speak for the the range in Sanford down by correct down by the airport where that is um, the range does it have a staff member or a responsible party that is there during hours of operations not full time no uh, we do kind of a roving 
uh, monitoring system, which is very common and kind of the norm uh, for our type of organization, uh, just general fish and game clubs that operate ranges. Um, there's typically somebody that stops by at least once a day, and there is usually somebody there for most of the weekend. So uh, in the basic operation, you know, members show up when the range is open and, and shoot according to the guidelines that are already set up. And then, but there's no permanent staff member there daily monitoring who's coming, who's going, who's firing what. That is correct. Okay. The, um, the question of um, background checks was, was mentioned. Are, are, are your members screened, as it were? They are screened internally. Uh, actually executing a background check on somebody is an extremely timely, difficult, and expensive process. Uh, so it is not something that we currently are doing. We do have an affidavit that they state, you know, I am lawfully able to possess firearms in the state. And that's kind of where we have to leave it. The question of insurance or liability was brought up essentially if a member is on the property and is acting in a way unbecoming of or unsafe as a, as a sportsman would be and they do cause property damage um, what insurance covers that who is liable in that situation so there's kind of there's two questions in that um, first yes we are insured I'm not going to go into all of the details about it but it is in line with what is appropriate for the activity that goes on there uh, as far as individuals I guess misbehaving is um, trying to come up with the right. Uh, that is not tolerated, um, both by internal members policing it and it is monitored and it does get shut down very hard, very quickly. Um, no, just just because I asked the same question um, when we were on the range, I want Zach to have the opportunity to give you the same response he gave me. So if somebody comes in and is intentionally acting um, out of pocket, so to say, mm -hmm. and intentionally firing unsafely, what is the club's protocol with that membership? Uh, they are asked to instantly pack their stuff up and leave. Um, and then there is a disciplinary review board and with almost 95% certainty, they will be ejected from the club. It's that not something that's tolerated and it's not something that occurs. Uh, infractions are usually minor petty things like he didn't pick up his trash, it, things of that nature, not true safety violations has anybody been expelled recently no do you have uh, any issue or has, has there been an issue in the past of people who are not members shooting at the ranges not that i'm aware of are, are there, there must be membership dues yes and what's over the past five years, what's the increase been in your membership? In five years, uh, off the top of my head, it may have increased 50. Uh, it's been pretty stable for the last five years or so. By 50 people? Yeah. It's, and it's at how many right now, roughly? It floats between about 700 and 800. And what was it like 10 years ago? I don't have that information off the top of my head. The um, I have a letter from uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Art Lamatage is that how to pronounce it? Uh, Lamontagne, yeah. Lamontagne. Sorry, my French is escaping me. Um, it, he uh, basically um, goes over a, a rough history of the club and and issues that they've had in the past. Um, and uh, according to his letter, uh, twenty years ago, roughly the uh, club, uh, according to his letter, 
total about 200 members and is now uh, almost at 800 is what his his letter says and he is the uh, treasurer for the uh, the Sanford Springvale Fish and Game Club so yeah I think extra copy. Um, the um, in the past uh, how long have you been the, the president or how long have you been a member Six years I've been a member and I've been president for four. Um, in that time, have you noticed a large increase in the usage at the Berwick Range? Honestly, no. Uh, it remains pretty consistent with what I've seen in my time period here. Have you noticed a change in the type of weapons being used? A subtle one, yes. Um, you tend to see more pistol work nowadays than you did in the past um it's it's also difficult to say covid kind of that whole time period and it, all of the rest of the unrest in the world kind of shook some of that up a little bit and it made things kind of odd for a while can you elaborate on odd <laughs> uh basically ammo was non-existent for that's true. Several years, um, and or was extremely expensive, and that yeah, okay. it, it it, it, I'll just make a comment about the membership. Is I think one of the things you know that I I, I heard is you talk about the membership is the difference between the membership when GE owned it and when Sanford Springville acquired it. You know, when when uh, GE owned it, they probably had 50 to 100 you know, people total there. And then the increase came when Sanford bought it, Sanford Springville bought it, and they brought their members in with it. That, that's the big increase that I think a lot of people saw, saw at that time. Was that, uh, just a quick question. Uh, are the folks, the GE folks, grandfathered in? I'm just trying to determine what why this huge increase in the amount of membership? I mean, is that due to your own club? Or are these primarily folks who are grandfathered in based on the sale of the property from GE to, to your group? I believe most of the GE folks transferred over to our club. Um, I Obviously, I wasn't around at that time. I've heard a bunch of conversations about that, and my understanding is that all of the GE members, save one or two, I believe, did come over to our club. Um, as far as the growth in membership, that's just natural progression of people would like a place to shoot, and that is, to an extent, what we provide. And they have the option of using your range in Sanford, correct? Correct. The um, Is there any limit on what type of weapons and what caliber of weapons can be used at the range? So no explosive devices, including Tannerite. Um, other than that, all legal firearms. Um, generally, it, this, is, this is another tricky question. Anything larger than a 50 caliber is considered a constructive device by the ATF, and that is limited and restricted in a different manner, uh, that is generally not allowed. Um, that being said, there are things like a lot of muzzle loaders and shotguns that are technically over 50 caliber, but they, the way the ATF has ruled it is they're regular firearms, not destructive devices. Um, also, could you address the you know, this talk about you no know, automatic fire? You no, know, is uh, could you address the use of automatic weapons, semi-automatic, and how that works? So, true full auto uh, firearms have been the quantity of them was locked off in 1986. There is no new fully automatic weapons in civilian hands that were not made prior to 1986. Uh, those are very heavily regulated. Uh, it, it, they're also extremely expensive because it is a limited quantity. 
we do allow full auto fire at the range. Uh, in my tenure and talking with several other people that have been around longer than I have, I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've actually seen a truly fully automatic firearm there. Um, and it's not something that somebody sits there and just goes at all day. Um, it's not a financially feasible. <laughs> Add a dollar a bullet. And... Yeah. 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 Probably not. Um, Could I powder? ask just a quick yeah. question? In term, you mentioned not in civilian hands, but there are people, for instance, military, uh, law enforcement, who are allowed to use those weapons at the range, correct? Correct. So the military side's a little different. Um, that's not generally something that they just release to people. Uh, but yes, police departments can, on their own accord, purchase fully automatic firearms. And Do any police departments currently use the range in Berwick? As a department, no. Uh, I know that there are several, uh, probably, I, I'm not even going to say, um, there are quite a few police individuals that use our range. And are any of those using fully automatic weapons? I couldn't tell you that. Um, I, I, I asked um, the Captain of Art Police, we, he was here on Tuesday at our meeting, and I asked him about their training. Um, and he said that the Berwick Police, and as far as he knows, most of the other police in the area use the Sampin Police Range. Know for their training only mm -hmm. because of the way it's set up. Said, you know, individuals may use an individual, you know, uh, shooting range someplace, but as the as as the police unit themselves, they use the Santa range. <clears throat> In regards to noise, do you get a lot of black powder shooters? I know that the times that I've shot black powder, the few times I found it much more echoey than. Do you see a lot of black powder at the range? Uh, probably leading up to basically muzzleloader deer hunting season, yes. Uh, other than that, it's rare. Okay, thank you. Um, do you keep any statistics on usage of the range? How many people go there on a daily basis, weekly basis, yearly basis? So about probably a month and a half ago, two months ago, uh, we redid our gate entrance to lock out at certain times and it does have some logging ability uh, it's still something that's new to us and we're fighting with it I actually went and tried to pull some of that information and I locked myself out of it <laughs> um, great. yeah um, do you predict that there's going to be much growth uh, or or increased of usage in the near future or year two three no, I don't. Um, I expect it to remain relatively consistent with as it has been for the past several years and is now. So you say you need a passcode to get in. Once they are on the range, is there any like log they have to log as far as their name no. and what kind of firearm they're using? No. In fact, my understanding is there are no cameras on site currently, correct? That is correct. Okay. Question, is there any consideration for the use of cameras or logging in so that at least patrons who are utilizing the range, should something go afoul, that, that it could be traced back? Yes, it's something that has heavily been discussed the last several years, and we finally have started to make some headway on it uh, internally and it's likely something that's going to be coming in the near future. Um, does the range have any specific certifications in terms of its safety or you know? So we do utilize uh, certified RSOs for some activities. Uh, and they do have certifications. I personally have certifications in range management and club management, as well as at least three RSO certifications. 
what um, what kind of uh, events do you have R- uh, RSOs at? Uh, so most of the competition sh- type shooting that occurs uh, in an attempt to in, to make sure that those events run smoothly and safely and all of that, it's required that RSOs be present. How often do those events occur? Uh, in the summertime, twice a month. Twice a month. Typically beginning about 9.30 and terminating about 1.30, 2 o'clock. Do you keep any records of complaints that have been brought up? We do. Uh, some of the records from, for example, in the 2004 time frame uh, are a mess, and I wasn't around, so I can't you know, articulate why or any of that, uh, but we do keep records of that. Some of it has been lost in my time, though. Uh, we have been tracking that, and it is documented. Have you ever had to close the ranges for any safety concerns? Uh, there's a tree branch on the power line <laughs> a couple a uh, month ago here. Uh, as far as actual range safety concerns, no. Or I guess shooting related safety concerns, no. Um, trees, unsafe situations with ice and et cetera. Yeah, I mean, that's. No, I've, I've been on a few shooting ranges in my life. Um, Typically, there is people with authority, authority to control, you know, like it's safe to go out of range, retrieve targets, things like that. Um, it, when there's not a permanent person there, is, uh, do, do specific members take control of that situation, or is it kind of a free-for-all? Nope. Uh, the first person there acts as the range safety officer. Uh, until they either turn it over to somebody that is more knowledgeable or is willing to, you know, be in that role, um, or they leave. Okay, so the first person there, they're responsible for downrange, uprange, safe, clear? Correct. Okay. And so, hypothetically, I show up 8 a.m., I'm the first person there, I'm the only person there, so I'm the, sa- I'm the safety officer for myself. People start showing up. Somebody who shows up is more knowledgeable than me, or I need to leave. I can pass it off to somebody else. That person takes the responsibility all the way until end of day when the last person leaves. Correct. Okay. I think that covers how is that. How is that tracked? Like, does one is there something that you guys have to identify who's the officer at that time? Uh, no, it's an agreement amongst it, um, the people on that range. Uh, each individual bay is essentially its own range that is controlled as its own bay and own okay. range. So in theory, you would have potentially three different RSOs on site. Correct. Or okay. more. So could you just describe um, the setup of how, where the shooting takes place or is supposed to take place in terms of location from the berm. Did we have a picture of the, the buildings? That I, I'm not the Gen- photographer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have, don't have the opportunity I, to I just, scroll back. Yeah, I think it would time. just be helpful for people to know logistically how the how the firing and where the firing is, is supposed to occur. Um, out of the building. Well, so it, on, the, on the video you can you can you can see as she pans around, there's a little building set up there. And yeah. um, so maybe my understanding just... that you know, the, the shooters are in the building, okay. separated, so you're in the building with the roof over your head. Yes. So if you're shooting up, you're going to be shooting through the roof. Okay. So, um, and I think that's an important point because I, I think one of the concerns that I've had um, and that has been expressed to me is the fact that there may be um, individuals not utilizing that area properly and not shooting out of the buildings, but in fact maybe shooting outside the buildings, which would obviously create a scenario where bullets could be going above the berm. So I just wanted to make that point. Shooting outside of the buildings is acceptable. 
and that is standard practice not only for our range as most others as well. Um, Could you discuss the berm so heights and I, I'm, how I'm, that's determined? So it's my understanding that if you were if you were using each one of those ranges, the 25, the 50, the 250, that you must be firing your weapon from inside those buildings located in each one of those ranges. So that's that's not correct. That's not correct. No. Okay. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, so typically at the 100 and 200 yard ranges, you will see people shooting from inside the building. Um, generally, people don't get closer to the target at that on those ranges. Mm -hmm. um, on the 25 yard range, it's predominantly pistols, and so people will get you know, right up to the target um, at varying distances. And it's my understanding that the 25 range is at a different kind of angle. <coughs> they all kind of point the same general direction, but yes, it is tipped back a little bit the other way. And if a bullet was to go over that berm, that would go straight over to the horse farm, if that was true? Uh, no, that was the 50. No. It's the 50 yard. Yeah. It's the 50 yard that's almost directly across from TNT. Yeah. Which, so yeah, it's 50 the, the there. Tw the 25 yard is actually turned a little more to the east. Mm -hmm. It would be pointing more this way. So is the 50 yard range mostly pistol or? Uh, it's mostly rifle. Yeah. Um, occasionally you'll see a little bit of pistol there, but predominantly rifle. Is that I asked because one of the bullets that was lodged in was uh, pistol. was a pistol round, yeah. and I mean, looking at the video, that there isn't to me a lot of distance between the top of the target and the top of the burn. I mean, I've shot pistols and. I'm a lousy shot, you know, um, and with the kick, I could kind of see where a shot might go above that. Please don't use the Berwick range. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know. Sorry. Yeah, that's so, that was one of my subtle objections to some of this video is it doesn't necessarily, depending on angle, show what is true on the ground and part of why we wanted to do a sight walk. Uh, that those berms there range in height from about 16 feet and 10 on the sides to <coughs> over 30. Um, and having the, been at the site walk, I can assure you they do appear much shorter on that video than they did in person <coughs> that day. I believe. Yeah, I mean the the only the one I a little yeah I think the only one I think I <coughs> had some concerns with the potential for bolts to go above is the fifty the fifty yard range. To do me, do you know offhand how tall that particular berm is? Uh, I measured it a couple of weeks ago. It was approximately. We'll hold you to. It was sixteen. Around um, sixteen feet. Yeah, it's it's fallen quite a bit this past winter. Um, ground not freezing has not done it much good. And is that something you guys will be, what do you, what do you call it, topping up? <laughs> topping Maintaining. Up. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so the burn, berms are maintained uh, on an as needed basis. Generally they get worked pretty heavily in the springtime after the ground thaws out and they kind of settled out their bit. Uh, yes, that that burn is absolutely on the list of ones that is going up. Yeah, it is, um, you know, talking about the, the, the ranges and the, the heights and things, and then you know, Kathy, right? Yes. She brought up, you know, talking about how um, moving gravel, and uh, from what I heard, it sounded like they were, they were changing the angle of the slope for the fire, and I'm assuming that's at the 200 yard one. Because that one does pitch down quite a bit, I know that. Um, would that be something that you could probably look, maybe look at for the, you know, the 50 and the 25 yard, you know, you know, pitching it down a little more, you know, just to for that extra safety bit. Yes, that's something that can be looked at. Um, 
I, I've heard murmurs of the berm direction changing over time or whatnot. Um, it actually hasn't since GE owned the range. Uh, when we bought the property, if you roll back on Google Earth, there is a building and a concrete track down at the end of what is now the 200 yard range. Um, that has been there. Uh, I can roll back to 98, I think is as far back as I can actually see it on Google Maps. Um, and it's still there. The, the general direction of berms and directions of fire has not changed. Yeah, the, the, the maturity of the trees around it, no, no. You can see that they haven't been disturbed for a while. So. And there's no signing in or signing out by anybody when they enter and leave the main? Functionally, no. Um, it's something we're looking at and discussing and have been trying to figure out how to do. Um, yes. So we, I mean, like, our town office has a key card that you slide and keeps track of. Is that something you guys are looking into? Yes, that's probably the forerunner um, to be honest it's difficult to get some people to understand how key cards work <laughs> um, and so that's been a fight internally that uh, I just think it would be really important for you to know you know as far as collection of data yep. just how many people and how often you can pull all that right yep. um, so it, you know, if your guys are, Looks like you're trying to that, I think that would be Oh, I'm, I'm aware of how they work. It's not, uh, not the younger group that is. <laughs> <laughs> is the, uh, Watch it now. There's a lot of us that have some gray hair. <laughs> I just want to follow up a little bit on uh, Priscilla's comment that she was able to walk around the entrance to gain access to the range. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could walk around the gate. You could walk through the woods. Uh, At that point, it would technically be trespass, though. Right, but I mean, right now, um, I think my other point is that where there are no cameras on site and there's no one there on a consistent basis overseeing the site, there is strong possibility that you could have unauthorized users on the site. There's no way to monitor that currently. Is that correct? That would be correct, yes. Okay. Have you entertained the thought of installing cameras on site? We have. Um, it's kind of a technically difficult facility to install cameras on. There's not a lot of power anywhere. Um, I also imagine you don't have internet either. That is correct as well. Um, but given the safety concerns and all the reports of stray bullets, and I, I mean, granted, you know, we're not attributing those, you know, absolutely. I know it, it needs verification, but I think, you know, the, the strong suggestion that, that the range may be a source, I mean, given all that, could you give some consideration to establishing a camera system? We could. Uh, this is one of the arguments internally that's come up. What, would, what information would a camera give me? Well, I think it would allow you to see who's who's <laughs> utilizing the site. So, so I think. Well, can I speak to that? Speak yeah. To so let me let me tell you something that happened at the North Burke Range. So a bullet was found, or was, a round was found on the uh, the deck of a, uh, one of that, one of the Pheasant Hill condominiums. Um, our police department went and, and investigated. The North Burke Range has both a you have to log in as well mm -hmm. as we have cameras at the range. What was found is that the per a person was going out there with frozen milk jugs and shooting at those frozen milk jugs, and the ricochet was what actually caused the bullet to land on Pheasant Hill, which allowed us to figure out who was doing it and to make sure that that activity would, would cease. So it does have some value, especially for a stray bullet, that you, could, you can go back and find out, first of all, who was the one that was firing and who was, were they actually doing something legal, were they... Were they shooting up instead of shooting down? I mean, so those things are, are they do have some value. The logging portion, I absolutely agree with. Um, cameras, I, I understand the situation. It was the cameras that solved the case for us. Um, and yeah, it, it does make sense. Was it? Was it your club's notes that I read that there was a little bit of pushback in regards? I read a couple of club's yes. notes to see if I could should get could get information about what other clubs might be doing while I was investigating my complaints, and I know that at least one of them had 
some member pushback in regards to people not wanting or feeling like there may be, I don't think I'm going to word this right, but so, uh, basically the, the potential for government oversight as to who owns what type of weapons and that type of tracking. And I don't know if that was your club or another club, but um, was that was that part of the issue with the? That's a concern of some individuals as well. Yes. For just okay. for just in terms of those cameras are your possession, and they're only utilized Correct. when. So they they are not for public consumption. Right. So anybody Correct. who's utilizing a weapon at that site, the only c consumption is 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 range consumption, unless asked by. Uh, by a police agency if they could see those and and even those only are utilized in case there's actually uh, something that's done wrong yeah unless there's actually a crime unless there's a election. crime that's committed so those th that camera video is completely 100 percent protected by range ownership mm -hmm. correct I'm, I'm doesn't mean everybody i'm will speaking them. for the club not myself in this situation so mm -hmm. i you know no, I, I that is the, the, now, just to put, with that. if I'm assuming I know the answer to this, but in the event that, God forbid, a horse or a person or whatever property is hit, if the police respond to that, um, even the North Borough police respond to that and wanted to check the range to see if there was somebody there, the club would be amenable to police at any and all times? Absolutely. Um, we, we actually, if you know you are finding those situations please report them because not reporting them isn't helping anybody and you know we we sit here and say it was or wasn't i, I you know I, I can't even say if we don't know and to the towns please if you're finding that contact us and let us know and we can investigate internally and determine something we're not aware of it. No, um, I don't remember. Somebody had mentioned that you were uh, looking at putting in some ex additional screening in terms of trees to try to dampen the sound. Yeah, uh, so we are looking at the noise aspect of it very heavily, and we've been monitoring it. And from our property, it's not necessarily what is heard elsewhere um, and that's why I you know I have no problem going and listening and hearing and I've asked some of you if you would mind if you know I went and sat and heard what you know your complaint is so I can figure out where it's coming from but you know if you sp speak to us and you say oh it's coming from here well okay I will go look at that but if that's not your actual issue you know we're going up the wrong direction uh, as far as actual noise abatement yes it's something we're heavily looking at and have been trying to pattern for several years now is that something mm -hmm. mr. Gary might be able to help you with on the walkthrough yes it's something we intend that? to talk to him about as well okay. uh, do you know what other clubs have done or are doing uh, yeah, some other clubs, a lot of it is basically shrub rope planting uh, with a sound break barrier in between, uh, typically some sort of wooden structure and then another layer of shrubbery. I think, um, just to let you know, I also reside on Randall Road and I can absolutely verify everything that has been presented in terms of the, the constant noise level. and. You know, I think I think the thing to understand is that you know the people who use the gun range, which they're they're authorized, I assume, to do, and certainly are entitled to use, use that range for a certain period of time, and then they're able to go home, you know, to their own peace and quiet. We don't have that luxury, and so I mean, I and I just want to, you know, emphasize that point that. Sometimes, that, although thankfully now you've adjusted the you know the start time to to 8 a.m., but there were times prior to that it would be you know 6:30 in the morning, and it's ongoing throughout the day. And I mean we don't get a break from the noise level, 
So I just, you know, would really urge you to keep in mind the fact that we're in effect being held hostage to it um, on a daily basis, and it does interfere, you know, with our quality of life um, on our own property. So. Um, I know that right now there are no legal requirements, you know, for you to to make any changes. But I just really strongly urge you to to hear what has been said here and understand the level of distress this has caused for the residents who abut your property. On a typical Saturday, how many people do you say go through there? That's got to be the busy day. I mean, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sundays are usually about the same as well. Uh, five to ten on would be a busy day. Um, there are definitely days where it's one, two person, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a question for you, um, and I'm hoping that you won't. Uh, invoke any sort of club privacy, but the day that we walked through there, were your club members told that we would be doing a site walk and not to go to the... No. So anybody while we were there, um, myself and you and, yep. and the town managers, they anybody could have come in. Yep. And I believe when this drone footage yeah. was actually shot... So, there, Sunday when Terry and I were there, there were, there were two people there when we first got there. Uh, we spent about an hour there, it was like uh, 10 to 11 o'clock Sunday morning, and while we were there, I think uh, two more people showed up. And so. nobody, if, I, if I'm correct, was there on uh, Snowmageddon Day when we were there? No. Well, so. it was also, <laughs> yeah, no, that was a good day to go. It was also at the end of the day and raining, so yeah. a little well, bit. Well, I, I think that's the other point, that yeah. this time of year, the use is definitely lower. Right. It was but just a it was just a curiosity rains, thing for me if they were told not to come. July and August. Well, August well on that on that lovely right. sixty degree day that we just enjoyed, um, right. the use level was a lot higher. Right. And you know, the minute it starts getting warmer, I mean, the range use right. increases well, say, exponentially. The morning, you know, the hour, though, know, as, as yeah. we as we were there, more yeah. people were showing up. Oh. You know, it was a nice day that yeah. day. So, so has there been? any thought given to perhaps having one day where the you know the range doesn't operate and and members can use utilize the Sanford range or perhaps work out an agreement if they want to be in the Berwick's to use our range is that a possibility at all or? that's something can, that can be discussed um, on face value the club's initial objection to it was if a day is picked mm -hmm somebody else is going to object to it, um, not us. A, a different neighbor will want a different day. Uh, I, I guess if we can come to an agreement and present a consistent plan mm -hmm. that, you know, that would alleviate some of that concern. You develop an opening yeah. schedule of close Sanford, open for work, and vice versa, you know? I mean, well, if you don't that, have that five was, people a day shoot, then you're not going to yeah. be. So is Sanford and Berwick both open seven days a week? Yes. Okay. So, um, do you have, do you, have you gotten um, a commencement, commensurate amount of complaints from the Sanford range, or is it much no. less? It's actually the other side of the police range. What do you mean? It's the same property. Yeah. But it is the other side of the police range. Okay. Um, so the same one that your departments use is yeah. the other half of that's our facility. So you don't receive as many down at the end, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not in a residential. Area like this range is. Yeah. Um, so you um, currently the hours of operation are 8 a.m. until sundown, and that's seven right. days a week. And, it, and that, when did that change? That was a recent change. Uh, yeah, we changed to 8 a.m. after the meeting we had with the Guptals. Uh, I don't want to speak when exactly that was. It was sometime this summer. Okay, this summer. So I think it was voted on in the August meeting, according to my notes from that your notes right that timeline. I printed. The meetings that are happening twice a month, Yes. Um, those are, I'm guessing, much busier? Yes. So how many people go through on a day like that? Uh, 40 to 60. Is there any um, communication with the budding property owners or anything about those meetings and when they're going to happen so they can prepare? Or there hasn't been. Uh, 
we did discuss that with the Guptals um, and, you know, basically said, hey, this is what we have going on the rest of the year. Um, other than that, no. It is posted on our public facing calendar. Um, so it's not like we're hiding it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. but do you guys have a Facebook page? We do. It's yeah. not particularly active. Well, uh, but, <laughs> but you know, it, it, uh, you know, so there's some place that people could find that kind of information if you have things posted. Yeah, honestly, our, our website, uh, it's linked through our Facebook page, all of that, uh, Google Maps, all of that is, you know, it's all open. We're not hiding you know, who we are, what we do. Yeah. Uh, all of that information is there. Uh, my email address, my phone numbers, uh, most well, of the board of directors' phone I, numbers. I was just thinking that you know a lot of the citizens who are concerned, if you had an email list of them, you know, where you could notify them, you know, four times a year or something on the schedule yep. of meets, um, that might be helpful so that they can kind of plan on those weekends. And actually, um, these are your meeting notes, uh, <laughs> as posted on your website, and it does. That was the August fourth meeting. Um, that you're going to make some changes to accommodate to starting with the 8 a.m. to sunset. Uh, this says we'll also try to move our organized shooting events to Saturday instead of Sunday, but it wouldn't be implemented until next year. Is that something that you're going to still look at? Yes. Um, I believe I have three or four events that are on a Sunday that I just could not move. Otherwise, the rest are on Saturdays. Okay, so Sunday will be probably a little bit quieter yeah I don't live there and I don't really know for sure but it sounds like there's a lot of bullets in a lot of people's yards uh, is that uh, concerning to you yeah, very and the fact that it's not getting reported is also extremely concerning um, and because if it's it's not getting reported it's not getting investigated and you know I don't know where it's coming from there are other facilities that you know other locations that people shoot and if it is coming from us like yeah I think so I don't how believe would it is but you want to report it to you right? yeah uh, no I report it to the police and you know as a town please contact us and okay. let us know mm -hmm. they they do have resources to recreate some of that and we have some as well um, I mean, it sounds like to me there might be you know, one or two people that shoot up in there once in a while, um, at, even though it's against club policy. And that, I haven't been a member of a gun club in a long time, but we used to have a, you know, we signed in yeah. in a notebook, um, the time in and the time out. Um, so I know that there's probably a lot of pushback from your members for cameras, but it seems like it would be pretty good neighbor kind of policy just to figure out if, if somebody's shooting up in the air and we, there's nobody there you know, you know that's full time yep. um, and I'm guessing that's not something you guys can afford to do is to hire a full time monitor um, so I, I mean just I think a good compromise to that would be cameras and I know that it's probably going to be a hard sell yep. um, but I think everybody here would, would be really appreciative of um, a measure like that and key lights. Or in the short term, would it be possible to just slap a, a uh, notebook in each one of those buildings and request that your members sign in and out, or at least sign in, so we know in the event that um, you know Miss Guptal does find something in her yard, that the police can go in and and uh, and see who was there and perhaps talk to them or ask you to talk to them. Is that a, a something that the club could maybe consider? Yes, I will take those three items, cameras, um, key cards, and uh, sign-in sheet as discussion Just because points. the sign-in sheet's quick, cheap, and easy yep. to get at least get you started until you get the uh, key card camera situation maybe ironed out with the club. We will take those as Something better points. than nothing. Yep. I would also ask that you bring it to the members the possibility of there being some rotating days off whether they be you know like two days a month maybe i don't know just something where there's a there's at least a possibility of a break in the in the action you know like 
just just as a general idea, I would I would ask that you broach the topic with them and see if there's something that uh, you know that can be agreed upon. <coughs> is your other range is it about as busy as this one? Probably more busy. Yeah, but you wouldn't feel it was if both crowds were put together. It wouldn't be overloading any one range, would it? It probably would. Yes. It would. It would overload. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You weren't on the site walk with us, were you? No, if I'd been there, there'd been a quorum. Oh, so. oh that's right. <laughs> you, had to stay, you had to stay away. Mm -hmm. Back to the rotating day topic. I, I will ask, please give us some direction on what day, time, all of that as a consensus group would be preferable. Every Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> open one day a week would be great. <laughs> Wendy wants to taste it. Is it okay? Yes, please go ahead. All right. So I just want to address at the beginning, we I was in touch with James and he put me in touch with, with the gun range. And I, I Zach and um, Art came over and sat on our porch. That was our solution. We thought if we can just ask them to come over and sit on our porch and hear what we're hearing, maybe we could work this out. That was two summers ago, I think it was. No, um, that was this past summer. Excuse me? That was this past summer. No, it wasn't Zach. Exactly. Was it? Yeah. July? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, honestly, I'm not going to, That it isn't that. <laughs> this past summer, the summer before, we asked you to come over, and they did. But, um, <coughs> and at the time, it was discussed that taking Sundays off every, every, that was our discussion. Do you remember that? It was one of the points. Okay. Yes. And um, you said to me, yes, that's possible. You'll work on it, that you would work on it, and try to get that off. But if that happened, the activity would be, because every Sunday there is activity going on there. With There is some kind of game going, I mean, what, I don't know what the name is. But there's, some, there's activity going on there. Is that right? It's not just twice a what. Twice this past summer, it was on Sundays, right. correct? So it was every Sunday. Um, uh, and I just want to tell you, <laughs> again, I'm just, I know this doesn't have anything to do with the noise, but I'm going to play it for you because this was a Sunday and this was, we were out by our pool. And let's hope you can hear it because oh, it's not working. <laughs> Did you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. But that was constant. It was all day. That's all we heard. And then, Zach, I think what you told me, told Stephen and I, was that if that was to happen, all the activities would have to be on Saturday, which would double the noise and double the activity. So it is happening every Sunday. Um, and I also want to address, I'm confused because when we sat on our porch, the other thing that was mentioned was at one point in Sanford, Art had mentioned in one point in Sanford, there had been a lot of calls and the police department just got tired of it because, and they came out. All right, this was a conversation and maybe Art would remember it, but he did share with, I don't know, I was gonna say maybe you went in the shooting range, but it was Art that went over to the shooting range. And he did mention at that time that the Sanford range wherever you had it wasn't at you had there was a lot of noise and the police were constantly being called out um it's wherever your I, facility I is on, route talking, four, yes. on route four and there was shooting going on there and because there was a lot of phone calls into the police department the captain or somebody of the police department approached you guys and gave you that property up there which solved a lot of things because from my understanding, nobody, there's nothing around there. There's no property around there that would be disturbed. It's all commercial, like big commercial businesses, I believe. So nothing's being disturbed there and that's why they offered you that property. Um, so I'm wondering like, we, here we are talking about noise and they solved it in Stanford, but we can't seem to solve it here in Berwick. And that, that, that's a puzzlement to me. We don't have a whole other piece of property to give them? 
<laughs> that's, we don't have we don't we don't have a whole no piece well that of that's true they had they yes. did have a piece of property but because they had a piece of property they were able to offer it to them but the point was is that that the noise was disturbing their disturbing people and they you know yeah somebody did step up and and gave them that property which was the police department yeah. I believe yeah. um, so and it's taken us a long time because I know it didn't it hasn't stopped yet and it is getting more and more active year round the other thing that I wanted to mention was I did speak with a game warden a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, and one suggestion that he did give us, and I don't know, this is something that we'd have to look into, is to put trespassing signs all along those trees because well, they of they have them. I'm sorry. They have them. Who have them? They have trespass no trespassing signs on them. No, on our property, on Michael's property. So if anything came over there, they would have to put trespassing signs on them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
acreage with nobody around, but finding acreage with nobody around that that's going to be allowed is going to be difficult. Yeah, but that, that thank you for reading that, but that was not my point. My point is, is that that was discussed. I, I, I don't think, it, I, it might have been, been this past summer that we did sit on our porch back, but I know that nothing's been done because I talked to Art and he said, you know, it's going to take a while. So I love the fact that you're open to that, but I hope it doesn't take too long. And also, Putting up trees, we've heard. I've heard a number of people say, or a couple of people say, there's so many trees out there. So, and the noise is still outrageous. So, to me, trees are not going to solve that problem. Putting up more trees is not going to block that noise because there is a lot of trees out there, as you can see. So, I just I wanted to make that point to hopefully you'll think about and brainstorm other ideas besides trees because. I, I can't see that trees are going to block up the noise since there's been the comment made that there's so many trees out there already. So I just I want to. Say and I can I can verify that out. I mean it's a solid solid block of tree growth between that gun range and Randall Road. Um, and, and I would agree. I don't see trees as being a, a great solution to that um, because I just think you know it's just as you described an echo effect. I mean whatever it is. I mean, the sound is really amplified, you know, on, on Randall Road. Is We're not going back to public comment. I just want to say one thing. From my house, there is no blockage. I can see the entrance to the range from my backyard. We're maybe two to 300 feet from their first shooting range as you go in. There's nothing. I can see right through there. So trees aren't the answer, I don't think. They may help, but they're not the answer. Is there a limit on the number of people who can access the range at one time? That's fine. Currently, no. Yeah, I have a copy. Yeah, I have a copy. And it'd be a recommended limit according to some um, whatever governing body sets forth the rules that you put by? Uh, not particularly a recommendation like that, no. We're not going back to come up. Yeah, I'm over to vote tomorrow. 45 went with gold. My, my house, my property borders the right away to the shooting range. And I got 700, 700 feet on the back of my property, borders the shooting range. And when I'm in my backyard, 200 feet from my backyard, they're, they're out there shooting. And no, they're not shooting straight out because they, they keep on, sometimes they haul a pole. And they have hay pigeons or whatever it is. But that's what, 200 feet from my property, out there shooting that stuff. Thank you. We're... We're not doing public comment right now. We had that section where we're discussing Nothing, the possible solutions. I noticed that movie didn't, didn't show the right of way going in, and it didn't uh, it, it didn't uh, show that shooting right behind our house. It's not all I heard about was the high powered stuff going to Randall Road. What about the stuff behind my house in, my, in our direction? Thank you. So. Um, are there any other questions for the gun range at this time from the board or the board's managers? Well, I just add, I mean, there may be an engineering solution to it. I mean, it's talking about a working committee with our representatives and senators in terms of, like, I think of funding. If we're talking, if it's a million-dollar project, we're talking affecting hundreds of people's lives. And if it's just a matter of figuring out grant funding to – accommodate both parties that's thinking idealist idealistically and optimistically okay. but if it's just a matter of um if there is a way to engineer a solution i don't know who is an auditory expert it have to be someone that does concerts or something like that but if yeah. there is a solution and the matter is finding the money for it and there's a really interest and again we're talking about hundreds of people's lives that are affected by it that may be an avenue Finding another piece of property, that's an interesting idea, but again, yeah, finding... Not one I post. You yeah. can thank Art for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Kids, the town manager, kind of yeah. <laughs> summoned by name. Yeah. Um, summoned by spirit. Yeah, so to clarify on our end, you know, we're hearing the noise is the big issue here. Um, and the money to mitigate the noise. I'm sure most of you are familiar with grants. They typically require matching funds. Before we even entertain looking down that road, 
I would need to know from the club if there's interest in investing in something like that and putting the matching funds forth. Again, you don't have to answer now. You can email me, but that's that's a key mm -hmm. proponent is they're going to want, you know, the businesses have to have some stake in the game. Yeah. Even there was, um, IFNW had a grant for shooting ranges in 2012. I believe it's exhausted, but they required a 30% match. So if you want to follow up with me after. That's definitely okay. something we're open to talking about. Access to that kind of engineered solution, audio, I mean, that, you know, that's a difficult thing for us to broach as the type of organization we are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if somebody has that contact information and can, you know, help us out there, that that is absolutely a spot we'd love mm -hmm. some assistance. Okay. All right. Um, we've heard a lot from the public. We've heard a lot from the gun range. Um, in terms of the next steps, you're going to have a safety inspection with Fish and Wildlife, and they're going to confirm or you know, investigate the safe, mm -hmm. safety of the of the uh, range. Um, you are going to broach with your members the possibilities of cameras, sign-ins, uh, uh, key cards, um, and the possibility of days off on a regular or rotating basis. Um, in terms of the events, you've already Try, you're trying to shift them from Sunday to Saturday, but at this time the range is still going to be open on Sundays, so that's something that's still, um, you know. But, uh, and in terms of your events, they're publicized on your website. People can find out when they are, so there's no shock or surprise. Um, and you are currently working on various possible solutions to sound abatement from screening to, and you're open to engineering. Um, and obviously from Art's email, he, he's interested in finding a new piece of property that might be less developed. But again, those things don't tend to fall out of the street. <laughs> you know, they don't come out of nowhere very often when they do come out. Um, but those are all things that are currently being worked on. Um, Going forward, as members of the community, if you have, if you find bullets, if you find bullet holes, if you find damage to your property that you think is attributable, then you need to contact the police so there can be a record, and the police will contact the range, and so that an investigation can be done to find out if it came from the range, if it did, who, and you know, uh, we can get to a result. If they're not being reported, there's not going to be any results. Um, I, I welcome copies of those reports delivered to me as well by email, in person, however, so I can keep track of what's going on too, please. Yeah. Uh, we do keep track of these complaints. They are part of the public record. They are held forever. So, you know, it's not like they're going down a rabbit hole. Your complaints are not being ignored. They're not being pushed aside. We all take them seriously. As I hope this meeting um, has displayed that we all take this situation seriously. We all take the your concerns seriously and we want to find an appropriate solution. Um, that being said, we have several possible you know, actions that can be taken and we're always looking for more. So, um, with that being said, is there anything else from the members of the board that they want to add to this proceeding? Yeah, just to emphasize, you know, get those reports filed. It's really important to document all of this. You know, um, there are several issues here, but without the documentation, it's hard to carry anything forward. Um, that's. Nothing happens. We report it and they close it out. I still have well, a bullet in my side. Like, they're welcome to come over and look at it and investigate. It's still there. Come over. Call me. Yeah, but but it's the place. still yes. the. 
having the volume of reports matters. Even if, you know, they investigate them and they find out, well, we don't know who actually if shot If 30 this people bullet. contact the police and say, we have bullets in our house, in our siding, in our thing, then that would demonstrate to the police and to the board that there is documented safety issue that we can act on. If there's a documented safety issue, then we can say, you know, the board, uh, the, the club needs to close until X safety concerns are addressed. Without the actual reports, then there's not, you know, if there's only two or three and they're unattributable to anybody, then there's not much we can do. But volume does count. Mm -hmm. So, would you recommend um, the people who define You need to come to the podium. Yeah. You need to come to the podium, to come to the, if you're going to talk. You need to come to the podium if you're going to speak. Uh, I was wondering if you would recommend the people who've been finding bullets to <clears throat> report to the uh, state police crime lab. They have the equipment to test the caliber of the bullet and other uh, forensics that local police don't have. No, the, the local police are the people that you'd want to report it to. If you, I mean, if you want to report to the state police, that is your, your, your right, but the local police okay. are the ones that are going to investigate it and provide us with reports. If you think it's hard to get through to us, through the police here, then you're going to find it's much harder for us to get through to the state police. Okay. You know, it's, that's yep. an added layer there. To the, the other thing uh, I don't think was mentioned was that we know that it opens at 8 a.m., and so we're, we're prepared for that. But you said that um, it closes at sundown. Who defines sundown? That's not sunset. If you said sunset, and I think that makes a big sunset. difference. It wouldn't be a big compromise on your part. But we can know by looking at a clock set, a sunset, we're going to have a couple hours of daylight to enjoy. It is actually sunset. That is the posted rule. It is sunset? Is the standard we use, yes. Because it has been going way past sunset. Thank you. Um, just, I just wanted to follow up, um, too, in terms of the next steps. So how do we document that those next steps are being taken? Um, well, I, I, Irish is going to be in contact with the gun range um, going forward, and um, she'll be reporting back to us as a board, and we can okay. certainly keep North Berg Board appraised of any updates and changes in the situation. We appreciate um, that. Okay. Which would be great. And I just would like, obviously, members of the public who have attended this meeting to have some means of getting those reports as well. It, the, 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 um, the meetings are always open to the public, and the agendas are posted you know, in advance, and mm -hmm. the video on demand is always available the next day, so you can get the full report that we receive okay. as a matter of record. Um, so perhaps what we should do is whenever I have an update from speaking with any member of the gun club, I'll request to be put on the agenda, speak during the other yeah. business portion, so and then the notify so that everybody who's okay. here in so the next can, can watch that. Reports of departments is what I would call them. Okay. Would yep. that be that? I try to avoid your meetings sometimes. <laughs> 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 too many meetings. Me too. But um, they always come up. So um, does that sound like a, a yes, amenable? Absolutely. Would that be yeah. amenable to you guys as well? So that way there's a public record yeah. of what I presented. Right. They can... I'll and watch and it can leisure. be very easily provided to the board, and you guys can have updates for your records as well. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. I think that has covered a lot of ground tonight in the past two and a half hours. Um, at this time, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Can I second it this time? No. <laughs> he just did. So all those in favor? Hey. There we go. You're never letting me second anything. Well, you got to win the election to get on the board.